Illegal things you can buy on Amazon right now. Ooh. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. The way this one's gonna work is I'm gonna show you guys the item and then tell you guys a story of how that item was used in a reported crime. Now, I don't know how smart it would have been to buy some of these items and show it to hundreds of thousands of people, but I will let you guys know I bought- It depends on how you use it, but if it's used for nefarious reasons, it really like, it, it's really bad in my opinion. <laughs> like, is he gonna buy some crack? No! One of these items, and we'll get to that when the time comes. And I do have to say that some of the items on this list are very actually coded. Actually. That doesn't mean I disagree with their purpose, though. I don't want to hear, Tuv, do you really disagree with self-defense? No, I don't. I just think it's interesting looking at the legality of some of these items mm. and not portraying it in a video format made for children. <sighs> Though the views would be nice. And if you aren't subscribed, don't even worry about that. I'll earn your subscription by the end of this video. I also want to say that the day that this video is uploaded, we have our first ever Tuv plushie over on the Earl website. This is the first time me, I am portrayed as a piece of merch. I usually do, so you know, Earl, cute. my character wow. that I made up. But you know Tricky what? Let's chair. switch it up. This is the first time that something about me. And the ears are foldable. And you could sit oh. down anywhere you place them. Oh except your hand apparently there you go let's i'll give you a little 360 of him awesome that's my old haircut that's the mullet my old earring right there <laughs> but yeah there's only 300 for sale and once they're sold out they're gone forever you can sleep with him hang out on the couch with him oh. play ps5 with him or place him in a part of your room so he's always staring at you but yeah if you're interested head over to earl doesn't exist.com and if you add him to your cart you can also get 20 percent off a piece of clothing from the essentials drop that's really it for the intro and now let's get started with the video Fake firearm projectiles. Uh -oh. It is perfectly legal to go on Amazon and buy a non-lethal projectile kinetic launcher, just like this one. In fact, that's what might come up if you look up gun on the search bar. Again, nothing wrong with that product. What has been argued to be illegal though, or at least borderline illegal, are these types of plastic balls that go with the guns. These are the max type of projectiles manufactured by a brand called Birna. Beyond the oleoresin capsicum, aka the pepper ingredient which is legal, they apparently also contain tear gas in powder form which is illegal. And based on a legal no, analysis I found, that, even bro. if the projectiles were to be made with a reformulated type of tear gas that is legal, they can still inflict great bodily harm when combined with the guns. The analysis draws from the law in Wisconsin which- Just get a real gun? Yeah, but what if you're a criminal and you can't have one? Yeah, just, just buy one, you know what I'm saying? That's why this is really bad. Yeah. For instance, considers pellet rifles with a pump to be dangerous weapons. It also goes on to define great bodily harm as an injury that leads to a significant risk of death, which is something not unheard of in the pellet projectile world. The specific case I have in mind happened in 2004, where while trying to control a rowdy crowd at a football game, this is when the Boston Red Sox defeated the Yankees, a police defeated. officer shot a pepper projectile at a bystander, <gasps> Victoria Snellgrove. The pellet hit her eye and she ended up dying. Now, besides the danger of the projectile launcher it and pellets awful. that can inflict on others, they can also easily put one in a crossfire with the police. That's something that actually happened this year after LAPD officers fired at a man in an apartment complex after he had fired at them with a very realistic looking projectile launcher. Thermite. Chat, I'm telling you, the, you guys all saying, oh, just, just get a pistol. Brother, what if you're like a person that can't get a gun legally, so you just buy one off of Amazon and use it for nefarious purposes? That's what they're arguing here. I'm not saying that's like, you know, a terrible like thing to have a gun. Right. When it comes to yeah. thermite, I don't know if the quantity matters in determining if possessing it is legal or illegal, but currently, it looks like the biggest packaging there is is this powder version on Amazon going for $24. That what if you get multiple of those? <laughs> It might not matter though because I'm pretty sure you could order as much powder as you needed to. You just make multiple orders. What makes thermite illegal for sure, however, is the section of the law. Like Michigan section 750116 that classifies mm -hmm. it as a burglary tool. Why? 
Well, because with the ability to burn at 1900 to 2000 degrees Celsius, it's one of those few materials that's capable of burning right through things made of steel, like doors mm -hmm. or safes. And it also doesn't take too long to burn through such metallic objects if you know what you're doing. Now, being a burglary tool, just like the case of being found with lockpicks or explosives, thermite would count as evidence against you if you get caught with it in an incriminating situation. And the penalty using- So how does Amazon get away with selling it? I don't understand. Mississippi is- Oh, it's a small amount. It's like, okay, so I'll just buy a bunch? Oh. Uh. An example could be as high as 40 years in prison. And to give you an example of how criminals might actually use this stuff, there is a weird case I found <gasps> from last year where a disgruntled fan, Farhan Jami, drove over 600 miles from New York to Ohio to his favorite influencer's home and set her car on fire using thermite. Jami, or Jamie, was apparently heartbroken after finding out that Kylie Carter, aka Just Foxy, who he had been sending money to in her streams, had a boyfriend, and that, oh, as a oh result, man. she was not going to be with him. And just to emphasize how lethal thermite can be, the car in question completely burned to the ground, and the fire also spread to a- Dude, what a schizo. What a schizo nearby fence and part of the house. Jamie got sentenced to 46 months in prison for all of that. Well, good, I guess. License plate flipper. Pro Is that a Tesla? Actually. It kind of does look like a Tesla. The I can't see the front, but I'm, ass I'm assuming it is. No, might be. Okay. ...completely burned to the ground, and the fire Fancy also spread car. to a nearby oh. fence and part of the house. Jamie got sentenced to 46 months in prison for all of that. A license Jaguar. plate flipper probably nothing on this list so far screams i am up to no good more than this license plate flipper that you can get on amazon today describe that oh i've seen so many rats that get pulled over for this shit i've seen it i've seen it online it's so funny it's easy to install and no, that it only officer, takes 1.5 no. seconds it enables you to flip both front and rear plates at the press of a button now i believe as they were making this video okay well that's good part of its genuine use would be to flip it to something cool when you're like at a car show showing off your showing off your car and then after those seconds and people applauding you go back to your normal license plate and uh drive away but that's obviously not how it's used for the most part it looks like it's used in illegal ways like evading tolls parking tickets and police chases those three are actually the reason philadelphia banned the device in april of this year with the mayor sherelle parker stating that under the new law any violators would face a fine of two thousand dollars the council member who introduced the bill mike driscoll called these plate flippers 007 devices yeah. and argued that they belong in action movies and not in philadelphia street I I think like for movie props and stuff it's okay you know like to like make things look extreme but like doing this it just yeah yeah you can't do that man nah yeah it, it's like fake driver's license or some shit you know you can't organized crime that would be, be a great tool oh absolutely <laughs> we just all flip our little like imagine i have like a crime syndicate of all the smugglers and then it flips to like a fake plate the smugglers yeah it's now i've used philadelphia as an example but that's not the only state where this is banned texas and washington have similar laws in effect and tennessee is currently considering doing the same and that's not to say such devices are only used to commit crimes in these four states in fact, just a few months ago in May, there was a case from Appleton, Wisconsin, where a 36-year-old man, Pal Yang, tried to use electronic license plate flippers to evade police and did so successfully, although he ended up in a fatal crash on County Highway G Lucky. in the town of Lowell. He had been driving a stolen rental car and began fleeing after a license plate reading camera alerted the police about him as he was cruising along the U.S. Highway 151 near County Highway W. He was found to have been driving intoxicated and several warrants had already been out for his arrest pepper spray next up is pepper spray but not your average pepper spray don't think this is another actually you shouldn't be able to actually. use these for self-defense that's not what i'm saying <laughs> like i said in the intro i don't want you guys to get that twisted there are quite a few options and they all seem great but then in a bid to stand out some companies do a little bit too much and end up in in illegal territory so although you can get on there and get yourself the vexor outdoorsman 9.2 ounce spray you would Why can't, you can just go to a hunting store or like um uh... Like, there's just stores that dedicate to this kind of stuff and you just purchase it legally. But again, if you're a felon or a criminal, it's really easy to get it. It would be going against the law in most states. Mm. How so? 
Well, consider this. In North Carolina, which has some of the more liberal pepper spray laws, the max size limit for one unit is 5.29 ounces. States like Hawaii, which are stricter, have a limit as low as 0.5 ounces. So 9.2 ounces, which is what the Vexor Outdoorsman contains, is way above the limit for most of these states in the US. This is something even previous buyers on Amazon acknowledge Ooh. in the reviews. Now as to why there's a limit on the size, the direct answer is simply to contain possible damage and limit it to self-defense. You wouldn't want, you know, someone to see this. That's what's kind of fucked about like Amazon, even in America, because every state is different. It's like, how do you regulate all this, man? As, <laughs> oh my God, this is the best, biggest pepper spray can. Let me go spray some people in the face. And if you're wondering who would do such a thing? Well, with a recent example being a case in Atlanta, where a couple used a combo of pepper spray and bear spray to rob kitchenware from the family dollar store at Martin Luther King Jr. Drive. They apparently first sprayed the quote big guy at the front with bear spray and then used pepper spray on the employees inside. So you can probably see why it would be legal to carry a big version of that. Switchblades. It's one of the many that are listed on Amazon mm. and that you can actually buy right now. Problem though, is that they're illegal in many parts of the US. In California, for example, section 21510 of the penal code specifically considers them highly effective weapons. And so carrying one, whether in your pocket or inside your car, is a criminal offense. There are- Yeah, that's why when you move states, you should also take into consideration if you have weapons like that. You should always check with states, depending. Yeah, don't make the mistake from moving from like Texas to Cali, like in case like something is legal there and then you bring it over and then you get fucking wabammed and now you're a criminal. Stipulations though as to what passes for a switchblade, with the two most looked at features being the blade of the knife and the operating mechanism. The blade mm. has to be at least two or more inches long and should be released automatically by flicking a button, pressuring the handle, or any similar mechanism. Keep in mind- So you can have a manual one. Meh. And also that the rules for what applies to be a switchblade varies from state to state. Some, for example, include blades whose length is shorter than two inches. Now, for the most part, this kind of knife is banned due to how easy it is to conceal. And as recently as two months ago, there are cases of robbers trying to use it to commit crimes. I'm specifically <gasps> referring to an incident in Pasadena where a 19-year-old had their home invaded by a robber using a pocket knife. Although they fought back and stabbed the suspect in the shoulder with it, they also That's got stabbed fuck. in the stomach and arms. Taser. Stun guns are all over Amazon. Most, like this one, promise great results, including the ability to lock- 450? The Taser Store? That's what they call it? The Taser Store? <laughs> tasers are brand name of stun guns? Oh, I did not know that! I thought Tasers was a taser! Yeah, okay, never mind. This is still pretty funny up a victim's muscles for 30 seconds from a distance of 15 feet. Now, while most states see them as self-defense devices, Rhode Island actually thinks otherwise. Section 114742 of their general this. laws specifically prohibits carrying, possessing, or using, among other things, stun guns. So if you live- Wait, 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 hold on. Let me read that. Or the so-called kung fu weapons? What the hell? Kung fu weapons? I like the brackets kung fu. Nunchucks? Why didn't they call them nunchucks? Isn't that what they call them, man? <laughs> using, among other things, stun guns. Kung so if you live there, ordering one on Amazon would definitely be illegal. Now, that goes to say that usually, usually amazon shouldn't mm. let you order these things if you're in a state that makes them illegal but obviously this video is just a very interesting list of things that are illegal so if you're a person that travels a lot and you buy a lot of things on amazon especially self-defense weapons there are some states that just don't allow whatever you're carrying interestingly that specific law was ruled to be unconstitutional in 2022 by a federal judge but somehow remains in effect as the publications have not been updated that what? is despite the attorney general stating that they would respect the judge's decision as it stands <sighs> there are claims out there that the law is still being quote on the books meaning it's being enforced just like it had been before but Dude, federal and state laws, man. Nah, that's fucked.
but these are just claims. What is for sure though is that stun guns have been used by criminals before. In 2023, for instance, there was a case in South Seattle where a man was robbed right in front of a doorstep at a home in Beacon Hill. The two armed robbers tased him for about 40 seconds, managing <gasps> to even pull a ring from his finger. And Bro, you can die from that. Your heart can fucking give out. Good lord, man. To make it worse, this wasn't an isolated incident. It was considered by police as being part of a larger operation by a group of seven young people that used the same MO to rob at least 14 other homes in the area. Batons. Still, in California, batons. it's illegal to manufacture, own, or sell batons, but then you can just hop on Amazon and get yourself one like you would <laughs> any other product. Now, the one I'm showing you is an example because- What if we make a smuggle on a baton? It's just the stick. I, that stick hurts, chat. That stick must hurt. The law is kind of broad as to what passes for a baton. It talks of leaded canes and batons, but then also mentions other similar weapons, even with different names, as being illegal and punishable with up to three years in jail. Anyway, for it to make sense why batons are illegal, at least Button. here in California, you have to picture how people behave in large crowds, especially when things get out of hand. No mm -hmm. pun intended. <laughs> a great example is the January 6, 2021 riot at the US Capitol. One man, 65-year-old Matthew Thomas Kroll, stole a baton from the police and used it to significantly injure three officers. He caused so much havoc that he ended up being considered, quote, one of the worst instigators of violence, end quote, during those oh, protests. Jesus, so clearly, if January everyone were allowed to carry six, batons, man. that riot would have gone a lot worse. Mm. Anyway, like I said, if you're caught with a baton, you can get up to three years in jail, and that's not even if you're using it. That's just if you're caught with it and if oh. you are caught using it then you could get up to six years in jail which is what kroll was sentenced to that's it for the baton let's head on to the next one lock picking set Another one of the quirky yet illegal items you can get on Amazon are lock picking sets. There are plenty of brands on there, this one being an example, but interestingly, most avoid the term lock So cheap too, like $20? Lock pick, choosing instead to be listed as automotive pick tools. My guess is that it's probably because <laughs> no one would want to so blatantly sell an item associated with theft, but I also think it has to do with strict laws around such things in general. What I have in mind- And the other thing, like, I know that sometimes you'd want to- like, you can lockpick really old cars, too. So locks us and the mechanics can't buy tools. I feel like if you're a locksmith or a lockpicker, you shouldn't be buying garbage from Amazon. I don't know. I don't know. I'm kind of like, I I'd have to understand it more to know what I'm talking about. But I'm like, I, I, I don't know. Depends are what are called burglary tools under the law. These are exactly what they sound like, tools that can aid in burglary and often, the law in the US says that if you're caught attempting to commit a crime, then having something like a lock picking set on you adds to the evidence that you really were about to commit the said crime. Yeah. That set is considered a burglary tool. However, some states like Virginia, as stated in their section 18.2-94, consider the mere act of carrying a burglary tool, a lock picking set in this case, a punishable offense. You can get up to 10 years in jail and it's pretty easy to see why this law exists because in some cases criminals that use lock picking sets can truly commit horrible crimes in 2015 for example two men bruce larson age 36 and charles wasaki age 37 were arrested in a series of burglaries they were connected to 25 unsolved cases and suspected to be responsible for as many as 100 such incidents in austin texas their entry method obviously lock picking more than 125 burglaries it does take some skill to lock pick i'll be honest i remember um there was a kid or something that had dad who was a locksmith and he said that lock picking is actually not easy you really have to like have like a finesse to it a <laughs> hundred plus though that's strong thanks to this tool burner phone there are plenty of burner phones on Amazon and they are wildly popular. You can get something like this, a track phone TCL, and while there's nothing fancy about it, as expected, mm. it can get the job done, whatever that is, because you could even pair it with a 30-day smartphone plan from Amazon. And believe it when I say <laughs> such phones are actually really popular, because that specific listing, for instance, has sold over 1,000 units in just a month. Anyway, moving Damn. on to the implications. That's a lot of criminals, or that's a lot of that's a lot of people that want to hide their uh, their unfair faithful relationships yeah i don't know you're not gonna order a burner phone on amazon that can be tracked yeah that's another thing like 
that's a, that's like another track that you have to cover up, you know. While most cases would find it curious if you're the caught NTR. with a burner phone in a yeah. crime situation, in Ohio, they go a step further. If you are found in possession of such a phone, which they consider a criminal tool, the burden is on you to prove that you weren't using it for any funny activities. Okay. That means you'll be assumed to have criminal intent unless you can show otherwise. And let's just say, I don't think anyone is buying a burner phone to just lay low and get off the internet for a while, unless for some reason you have some pictures of puppies on there that you can show the officer. This is why I have a burner phone, by the way. There's a lot of room for- or, or you're cheating. That's like the most common one, is it not? I feel like- I feel like that's like the most common thing. Apart from criminal activity, obviously. <laughs> Here, officer, I'm cheating on my wife! <laughs> I'm not doing a crime, I'm just cheating on my wife! a judge to decide on the sentencing as it could range anywhere from 6 months to 12 months or more depending on what you did. There's a very twisted case of a man by the name of Rex Hewerman that sort of illustrates how evil some people can get while hiding behind burner phones. Hewerman, who was a serial killer, would use a different oh. burner to contact his victims, sex workers from Craigslist. He would lure them in and murder them. He killed at least four women this way and disposed of their bodies at Gilgo Beach, Long Island. He used the same phones to taunt some of their relatives. Interestingly, the only reason he was caught was because the police followed the patterns of his calls, location, time, service provider, etc. And they match with- Yeah, and they ping the towers and shit too. That's- So he fought through that, but then he kept calling from the same place at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, classic. Classic the surveillance they had on him. So even though the burners couldn't identify him or his personal details, they narrowed down the police's search to a specific cell tower where the signals pinged from and soon enough, they could match patterns between the burners and Hewerman's actual mobile phone. Flipper Zero. <laughs> you currently can't get a Flipper Zero. Wait, you still had your actual phone on you while you were doing that? Yeah, that, you, that you're a dumbass. A hundred percent. On Amazon, you actually used to be able to get a Flipper Zero on Amazon. To my knowledge, that's where, a, that's like a lot of hype of the product that it was, it was available, available on Amazon. But for me, at least it's no longer available on the store. But you do know what you can get instead. Well, this Wi-Fi dev board for Flipper Zero and probably all the other parts, just not the whole thing in one piece. That could mean mm. that with all the separate parts and probably a few YouTube tutorials, you could have an entire working alternative. Now in the US, this mm. device isn't illegal and you can carry it around, but in other territories like Canada, it's completely banned. In mid-February, Pirate software is one of the things. Isn't he like a white white hacker, white hat hacker or something? He went to like a hacker con. Like I can understand why he would be interested in that. Yeah, he, he has kind of a reason to have this kind of thing. We have this year, the Canadian government yeah, called for its stuff. removal from stores online and offline because it was apparent. Tamagotchi for hackers will be removed from the Canadian marketplace. <laughs> Oh. Apparently making the car theft crisis worse. Allegedly, it could be used to, among other things, open car doors by cloning car keys. This was, however, disputed by the company behind Flipper Zero. But then the government insisted there was a possible misuse and abuse of the device. And just to be clear, this device is intended for ethical hacking and testing security systems. And with the standard firmware from the manufacturer, it can check for vulnerabilities in wireless networks, clone access cards, and send and receive infrared signals and radio frequencies. So. I I feel like again this is such a gray area because it's like it's it's just a tool right like it's a tool like the lock picking thing this is more of a quality product and i think it's exclusive but like at the same time it's really dependent on the person man i'll hack alan's smart bed yeah then you'll put it at a 20 instead of a 60 like i normally sleep on and have a terrible like terrible time sleeping god i would be so sad that would make me so upset. Oh, nothing fishy with that, but then people have found yeah. ways to replace the original firmware with ones that can get the device to do much more than the manufacturer intended. But still, Damn. even in its standard form, it can cause a degree of harm. There's a recent case from Moab, Utah, for example, where a student at Grand County High School used it to disrupt learning by turning on and off the Promethean board as lessons continued. One teacher- <laughs> was apparently so distressed that she had no idea what was going on during her class she even thought there were ghosts lurking around oh my god skill issue come on i would immediately be like you one of you little fucking you shit bags you're doing it aren't you ghosts <laughs>
g g are doing this? Ba -ba 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 she had ended up wasting an 87 minute period. Interestingly, no one in the staff team knew what was causing the issue. Unless actually like such a skill issue. Like if it's that, I immediately be like, it's a, it's a prank and someone's fucking with me. Until some of the students finally volunteered with the information. And this is the only product from the list that I actually have. The only thing, or one of the one of the few things on this list that isn't illegal, but you can do illegal things with it. I do have the dev board, and I bought this from. I actually bought this from their website, and I have yet to even use it. As you can see, they have a little little cute dolphin logo oh. and your SD card. I haven't used it at all, but dolphin. let me let me know if you guys would like to see a video. That makes sense, though. Dolphins are kind of evil, so it makes sense. Yeah, if little flipper. Mm. I'll, I'll dedicate it to the flipper zero testing how far you can take yeah, it one of the evil. things i know you can do like i just explained is that you can copy the codes to certain cards like key cards you have yeah. to have the device like right next to it so if you're a criminal you know you might be able to find an easy way to get into someone's hotel room but the thing is you would need to have their card on hand first i don't know I don't, it, it, it can get kind of dangerous if you if you see where I'm going with this and uh, use it to copy that code and then ping yourself right into their door or college dorms that have that certain like key card get access. If you can somehow get that. Well, how close are they talking, though? What if someone has like a bag and then they're like walking around with the bag and the card is in the bag? How close do you have to be to swipe it? That's that's another thing, man. Serial code. In Two centimeters, like, inches. I don't know. You could probably, like, bump into them and, like, guess where the card is. You'd have to be watching them. Again, this is all with, like, criminal intent in mind, man. Yeah, you'd have to be really close. Into this thing. Yeah, you can enter these, these rooms. That fast. I gotta, yeah, I gotta right. look into the tutorials. I gotta watch more more videos on this. I, I was I was in communication with a hacker that bailed on me. Yeah, this, that dude was supposed to help with this video. And uh, he said he would mod my flipper for me. But it looks like I'm gonna have to mod it on my own. But yeah, Aww. like I said, let me know if you guys would like a video dedicated to this product. I'm fascinated by it. And with that being said, Pretty let's head cool. on to the next item. It's like that. Ceramic spark plugs. Spark plugs are all over. Oh no. I watched the um what is it called? Fuck. Channel 5? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Channel 5. Yeah, stealing cars in San Francisco. Yeah, breaking windows. Yeah. On Amazon, you can get pretty much whichever you need because the variety is great. That includes ceramic ones like this one. Now, these alone are not illegal. But if you were to buy them, break them into little pieces, and carry them around, mm -hmm. that would be illegal. Specifically in California and some other states. That's because under the law, like California's Penal Code 466 PC, spark plug pieces are considered burglary tools. The pieces are so effective at enabling break-ins that they have a name among criminals. Ninja That's crazy because it's like... It it's a ceramic spark plug. Yeah, like, uh, it, it's just, like, for car replacement. Like, I remember reading about it, and it's just like, oh, my God. It's because people do it. Ninja rocks. Why ninja rocks? Well, they can break windows quite easily. Like, yeah, really car easily. windows. That's why over the years, they've been frequently used in smash and grab auto burglaries in the US. I actually believe their usage came into the limelight around 2003 or thereabout, as that's when they were officially added to the list of burglary tools in California. This was done following a case where the accused, Mark Gordon, appealed his burglary conviction, arguing that broken spark plugs weren't even part of what the state considered burglary tools at the time. Of course, the state being cautious as to what that meant for the future added them to the list. Now, just for context, Gordon had been caught twice stealing from cars, having broken the windows in each case using spark plug pieces. In the first case, a man named Frank Perez found Gordon pulling- And it's so fast too, unlike other methods where it's like you have to kind of smash it constantly. This is really, really easy to just throw and then like get like a fucking glove in to like snatch shit. Yeah, I watched the video. It's actually quite fascinating. A stereo speaker out of his Ford Escort, and upon mm. confrontation, he discovered Gordon had actually taken other items, including an amplifier, containers of CDs, and a wedding ring. In the second case, police sergeant Anne Marie Hisks was on patrol when he ran into Perez and two other men trying to pry a stereo system from a Volvo. Perez was searched, and unsurprisingly, he had pieces of ceramic spark plugs in his pockets. Mm. Kimber Pepper Plaster 2. 
One of the most lethal Sad. pepper spray self-defense kits has to be the Kimber Pepper Blaster 2. You can get it on Amazon, and although it's a bit pricey at $92, it seems to be a fairly popular option due to what it promises. The company that makes it calls it revolutionary, stating that it Revolutionary non-aerosol pyrotechnic delivery system. What the deliver a fist in your ass, bro? What the frick? It can shoot what the contents the at speeds of 112 miles per hour, which also means it doesn't get much blowback from the wind, if like any. Damage. It also remains accurately on target for up to 13 feet. Good as it may be, though, the Pepper Blaster is illegal in California for a very specific and technical reason. Normally, regular aerosol sprays, which most pepper sprays are, eject the contents through pressurization. That means yeah. the contents are stored under pressure, and so once you press the trigger, they come flying out. The Pepper Blaster, though, uses a clever trigger mechanism where a stored powder is used to trigger an explosion that forces the contents out. Sort of the same concepts of how a regular gun works. This alternative, non-aerosol trigger mechanism is what California's law don't accept, hence the explicit ban on such a pro- There's so many things wrong with Cali. They, they fucking make everything illegal in California because they get, they get one guy so bad. <laughs> product from being owned by a private yeah, citizen. A fire, now, an man. incident that can probably show you why such a powerful pepper spray product isn't allowed on just any hands is one recently in Manhattan. In an unprovoked attack, an Uber driver, Shohel Mahmoud, got pepper sprayed directly in the eyes by one of his passengers who had been in the back seat. This was with the car still moving. The attack was thought oh, to have geez. been racially motivated as Mahmoud <gasps> allegedly heard the attacker, 23-year-old Jennifer Gilbell, telling the other passenger that she sprayed him because he was brown. Anyway, Classic white women, man. It's unimaginable what the effects would be in such a situation where a pepper blaster Classic. is used in a hateful way. Nunchucks. Depending on how you interpret the law, these kinds of nunchucks which you can currently get on Amazon can be illegal or legal. Strictly speaking, the original nunchaku, the ones used as weapons in Japanese martial arts, are made of wooden handles joined by rope or chain. However, over time, wood has often been replaced with plastic or metal. Now, the law, such as Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 269, Section 10, considers either of those, whether plastic, wood, or metal, to be a weapon whose possession is punishable with jail time. It is, however, easy to see how solid rubber nunchucks Oh, um, my brother had nunchucks when he was younger, and he wouldn't let me have them, like, it let me play with them until I got older. <laughs> he had nunchucks, yeah. Nunchucks can be added on there, as they might inflict damage that is maybe comparable to the Bruce plastic Lee, ones. Though. But that's just me thinking out loud, I'm not a lawyer. There's a case from 2011, though, that would probably back up my statements, where a prisoner, 31-year-old Lorenzo Pollard, used makeshift like nunchucks to fight his way out of a medium yeah. security St. Louis prison. Yup, that's right. The guy used nunchucks made from parts of a chair and bed sheets to f- <laughs> Dude, that's so strong! From bed sheets and chair table. <laughs> like the chair. By a dozen guards oh and also God, break a glass dude. wall before scaling over two razor wire fences. He was later arrested on a city street without much incident. And nah, man, the fence got him for no reason, man. That's just fucking strong. In our case, there were two guys fighting, and one of them used nunchucks on the other, causing them to get hospitalized. The perpetrator, James Brian Brunel, age 23, was arrested and charged with aggravated battery with a deadly weapon. So yeah, nunchucks are indeed a serious weapon. License yeah, plate cover. For sure. If a plate flipper at $89 is expensive, then the next option, which is just as illegal, could be a license plate cover. They go for This is anecdotal. I had a friend at work that told me that they had a they had a boyfriend that said that um uh what are they called? Fucking license plate covers aren't illegal. And I was like, what do you mean you're obscuring your license plate so I can't read it if you fuck me up? Yeah, like, they're pretty much illegal everywhere. It's literally, you're covering up your license, but they're like, no, I, I, I just think that you're wrong. And, like, his, his girlfriend was, like, telling me at work. I'm like, what the fuck, man? Of course it's illegal. She's Delulu. No, 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 she was saying to me that he was arguing with her and she was telling me. And I was like, yeah, of course it is. I was agreeing with her. She's not that stupid, I, I would hope.
for about $15 on Amazon, and although as of this filming, you, you can order one here. and install it on your car, they are very much illegal in states like New York. In fact, New York's law illegal. against these devices went into full sure. effect just this year, and it prohibits any sales or frames or any covers that can potentially obstruct or conceal a plate or make it impossible for it to correctly be photographed by speed yeah. cameras or any... Or, or uh, it can, like, obscure it if you're trying to, like, uh, you know, read it on a dark, rainy day or something. It's supposed to be legible no matter what. I think it's like, um, it's sometimes you can get an infraction for having too dirty of a license plate. You have to like brush it off depending on what state you live in. If a cop pulls you over, it's like an infraction. Cause it's like, you're not taking care of it to like make it visible enough. Yeah. As a volunteer firefighter, I've seen these legal, illegal plates all the time during high speed wrecks. Yeah, because they're pieces of shit and then they, you know, they get into wrecks because they don't want to get caught. Similar license plate reading mm -hmm. cameras. New York particularly seem charged about these devices because in total, it's estimated that the city loses around $100 million per year in toll fees to drivers who obscure license plates. That's about 20% mm -hmm. of drivers not paying for such tolls. Also, the same section of drivers has some that use play covers to evade police cameras all over the city. Now, keep in mind the cover yeah. I just showed you is simply an example. They generally come in different shapes and forms. In fact, just this year, there's a man by the name of LaQuincy Anderson who was arrested at the George Washington bridge for using a license plate cover that rolled down from the plate holder. It had helped them evade <laughs> tolls and fees estimated at 20000 Wait, he has a little machine that puts it up and down? <laughs> They just caught you red-handed, man. Sorry. Dollars. He was charged with theft of service, cool. tampering schooled. with a government document, and possession of burglar tools. Daggers and dirks. Among the large collection of knives on Amazon are daggers and dirks. Now, these two are clearly different things. A dirk is a Scottish dagger with a long dirk. blade, but for legal purposes, they fall into the same category. They are, however, different from switch- The only reason I know what a dirk is is because of Diablo 2. <laughs> a lot of weapons, I just didn't know what they were until I played Diablo. A dirk. Yeah, scimitars, rapiers blades even in legal definitions because those ones switchblades have blades that retract or fold anyway daggers and dirks despite how exciting anyone might find them are viewed mm -hmm. as being so dangerous that in some states like california just carrying them makes you guilty according to the Jesus. state's penal code section 21310 pc every time i read the penal codes i feel like i literally feel like that emoji if you are arrested <laughs> with either of the Actually. two it doesn't matter if you intend to commit a crime nope you are guilty by just having it with you. Though, to be honest, I'm not a police officer, but um, I don't think they would really arrest you just for seeing that. I feel like they just added on to a charge if you were, for example, drunk driving, they'd add that. Again, I'm not a police officer, but I don't really know if they'd just arrest you for having it. But yeah, don't take that from me. Don't don't go out with the intent yeah. to get arrested to check out if, if that works or not. Yeah, don't <laughs> do that This is unlike shit. the case of other similar weapons, where the police have to prove that you intended to commit a crime at the time that they arrested you with the weapon. And maybe the law is just so because of how easy it is to become a menace using only a dagger or dirk. There is a case, for instance, that happened in El Paso in 2019, where a man walked into a Dollar General store, threatened the clerk with a dagger, and walked away with $100. Dollar General, man. That is a low. Not even a gas station? Nice worth it. Yeah, $100 reduce. Yeah, wow. Congrats. That's probably all they can fucking hold. That's literally all they can fucking hold in dollar, dollar General because it's fucking Dollar General, man. It's not clear if he was ever yeah. caught, but this makes the point clear. Real weapons it's that can lead to real dumb, crime. Man. Gen 3 Night Vision Optics. If for whatever reason you wanted to see in the dark and had $7,942 to spend, you can hop on Amazon and get yourself Gen 3 night vision goggles. These are described Ooh, as having, among other features, a 51 degree field of view and the- $7,000?! Holy shit! Capability to let you read in complete darkness. Money. They Holy are somehow shit. apparently military fuck? or law enforcement grade or even better. Now, the funny thing with these is that these are completely legal for a U.S. citizen to own and use. However, they- Wait! <laughs> That's kind of sick. Maybe I should get some. It's gonna go- 
cannot, under any circumstances, be used or owned by non-U.S. citizens uh, on U.S. soil. Okay. They also can't be shipped out of the country without a special license from the State Department, as they are strictly regulated under international traffic and okay, arms regulations. All that because of how powerful they are considered to be and to keep them away from U.S. enemies. So in general, if you were to go against these rules that I just stated, given how serious the uh, government is with these things, there's a 100% chance you will be prosecuted. That's actually something that happened to five guys back in 2021 when they were caught trying to export thermal imaging equipment <laughs> to Russia. <laughs> we can't have our enemies have this technology. And night vision goggles to Russia. Uh -oh. They were charged by the FBI in Los Angeles and faced uh -oh. up to 20 years. Also, even if you are a U.S. citizen, just support. like some of the other products, if you are caught with this in hand in an incriminating situation, they can be used against you as evidence. That yeah. happened to 36-year-old Edward Cordonaire earlier this year after he was caught lurking around his ex-girlfriend's house, armed with a pistol, two magazines, and holding night vision goggles. <laughs> it also didn't help that he had a criminal past where he had been convicted of... <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't sound innocent. Not only guns, but a night vision goggles. <laughs> That's like incriminating and pun incriminating, man. <laughs> and That's indecent hilarious. assault of an underage girl. A search of his home also revealed a whole lot of other weapons. What? The point, though, is that having night vision goggles on him while trying to commit That's a crime redacted. didn't help his case at all. Laser pointer. Regarding lasers, federal rules are pretty clear. A manufacturer cannot label a product a, quote, laser pointer if it has power exceeding 5 milliwatts. Such a product is illegal. But then, interestingly, mm. if a consumer happens to get their hands on such a product, they can keep it. Though that's a big maybe. Now what, what I've just described is exactly what this listing on Amazon is. The sellers- You know what I'm surprised about is that they don't have those stupid flashlights that are really, really bright too. Yeah, have you not seen, uh, like, the TikToks where they have the really bright fucking laser beam fucking flashlights that light up an entire, like, block? Yeah, I'm surprised those aren't illegal. Sort of tries to dodge the rules by labeling it a pointer, misspelling the I, and also being very light mm -hmm. on the details, but a keen eye can see through that. Obviously, this is just so Amazon won't take it down, and so their bot won't automatically read any any specific words if it has that you know kind of like how youtube does and just take it down and does this product actually work well well yeah it obviously does yeah branded clown thank you so much for the nice words and think of the 1500 biddies man thank you so much amazon doesn't care well amazon doesn't care because they can't enforce like they don't really enforce like lee <laughs> I don't know if they do, obviously, because I haven't bought anything illegal on Amazon, or at least I hope I haven't. But it's like, do they actually care about those kinds of things? Like when you're typing in the address and if it's like in the state and it's illegal, can they do they just deny you? Like, I don't even know. Yeah, I don't know how it works. Why don't we just take a look at the reviews? First, it's a Class 3A laser with a whopping 50,000 oh, milliwatts of power. Remember what the legal limit is? That's right, five. Five milliwatts. <sighs> Second, those who bought it know it has legal question marks because what's in the listing and what you get are not the same thing. It's, for instance, not a blue Need light as for, indicated man. in the listing. And the reviews show some concerns over safety, including the fact that it can inflict damage. That being that it causes pain on the skin, it can ignite items like paper, and has an ultra bright beam that is visible from up to 100 feet even in daylight. Probably oh why they include God. safety glasses in the packaging. I also noticed some of the reviews were saying <laughs> that they were using it to point at wow, the stars, thanks. but what are the chances that you use it to point at planes? I mean, yeah, that's like a death star. That's gonna kill you. Last year, a 35 year old man, really William Hill, fell into such a temptation and pointed a green laser beam at different planes above his home, including. That's how you get, like, on a no-fly list, man. How fucking stupid do you have to be? I... <laughs> a police helicopter. This happened in Indianola, Phoenix, and although his defense was that he wanted to see how Arizona. powerful the laser was, the crime was still a felony that landed him in Maricopa County Jail. A neighbor told police that the man typically used the laser to play with cats. That, those fucking cats are... 
are lucky they're not fucking blind or dead. What the fuck? Fail. The FAA's response to the incident yeah, was that such beams are dangerous as balls. they can injure pilots and that for repeated violations, one could be charged up to $30,800. Alright guys, that was it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you liked the video, maybe consider clicking the like button. Click that like button. I love when you guys click that like button. If you're on the TV, yeah, go out of your way to go to the Damn, right of the screen and like click that like button. button. That's awesome. I love when you yeah. guys do that. Shout out to the PC watchers right now and the, the mobile users, you know, and the PS5, Xbox people are watching this. I noticed y'all. And click that like button. <laughs> And if I earned Evan's your subscription, nice. make sure have, to have, subscribe. Have. <laughs> That's it. Uh, go get the plushie if you want to. And I will see you guys Hubby next wubby. time I upload.